Uh, dear colleagues, I'm uh, very happy to welcome you at our online meeting. Today, the Primakov Center uh, conducts a online discussion on Russian-Turkish relations and whether uh, and where they are heading right now. So uh, Russian-Turkish relations uh, have been developing very quickly in the recent years as uh, regards to our economic cooperation and political cooperation, Russia and Turkey have uh, a lot of uh, common, common issues to tackle. This concerns many areas where Russian and Turkish policy uh, intersect, as in South Caucasus or in uh, the Middle East, in the Ukrainian conflict, etc. So uh, Russia and Turkey has always have a lot of things to discuss and always have a lot of uh, common issues to tackle uh, in the economic sphere, in food security, in uh, international security in the Middle East. So uh, today I would like to uh, thank, first of all, our dear guests, uh, Mr. Uh, Pavel Shlikov, uh, Russian scientist who specializes in Turkey and represents the uh, Moscow State University, and Mr. Mitad Chelikpala from Kadir Has University in Istanbul in Turkey. Uh, we're very happy to see you here with us, and I hope we'll have a fruitful discussion, as we have, to, uh, as we always have at the Primakov Center. Uh, I would like to start with the first question, and I would like to ask Mr. Chilik Pala to answer it first. So, uh, how does Turkey view its position in the region, and what are the main threats and probably the opportunities the Turkish leadership sees? And how does it see the role of Russia? And what is the role of Russia in the Turkish foreign policy? Yeah, I, uh, thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure uh, to be part of this uh, Primakov Center's event uh, with Power. Uh, and, you know, this is a big question and main question, in fact, especially Western partners or actors uh, and academics are asking the same question. And therefore, this is the first time a Russian institute asking and trying to understand the nature of Turkish-Russian relations very lately. How is it developing and what's the prospects and some limitations on these relations? Uh, I, I believe that it's going to be a good discussion. Uh, as you mentioned at the introduction, and the Turkish-Russian relations are special relations last two decades at least. And both parties managed to establish much more balanced relations in terms of political, uh, economic, and even trade-related issues. And we saw that a kind of a cooperation between Turkey and Russia uh, in the security areas as well, joint uh, projects, as well as offering some regional schemes to, to produce a kind of a peace environment for a long while, from the Black Sea region to the Caucasus, from the Eastern Mediterranean to, to towards the, the Middle Eastern areas, especially uh, Syria. What what is happening very currently uh, caused some question marks, created some question marks in this bilateral relations. In terms of bilateral aspect of Turkish Russian relations, uh, still I don't see any kind of a negative development or limitation. And trade relations are still uh, going on, and we see that Turkish Russian trade volume is increased. Uh, very severely, and it's, it's a serious amount of uh, cooperation between two parties. And Russia and Turkey acting uh, to provide some security environment in the Caucasus, and still partners in the Eastern Mediterranean and as well as uh, Syria. But the Black Sea are as a complicated issue, and that created a kind of a limited uh, perspective for Turkey. And, you know, very traditional and uh, Turkish policymakers believe that the security of Turkey has been dictated by two main elements, geography and long-standing ties with the neighboring countries. And these are the determinants that makes Turkey as a key regional security player in different regions. And Russia was one of the pillars of this equation. But I can say that uh, Turkey as a European and NATO member country have some limitations with Russian relations. And it seems that Turkey is trying to balance and try to keep its autonomous position uh, via the Western partners and try to keep the links with uh, Russia. And under current circumstances, and President Erdogan a couple of uh, times mentioned that we do not lose Russia, 
and put it aside. And but at, on the other hand, we would like to keep our relations with Ukraine as it is as well. I don't know if it's, it's, it's possible or not, but you know, up until that time, after a couple of months since Gen January and February, Turkey managed it. And I see Turkish-Russian relations have a potential to propose a kind of a security environment with the acceptance of Western actors. And Turkey is keeping its NATO uh, network or connections, but on the other hand, not being a part of all those sanctions on Russia and, and giving a kind of a, a support to Russian understanding in the international environment, try to balance it. Uh, but I don't know whether it's a possibility to survive and to continue with such a kind of an environment. This is a question mark. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chelikpala. And I would like now to address Mr. Shlikov. So as Mr. Chelikpala mentioned that Russia was one of the pillars of Turkish security and Russian Turkish relations have, have always been uh, balanced. So uh, how does Russia in its turn see uh, Turkey and Turkey's role in the region? Uh, is Turkey one pillar of Russian policy in this region? Well, uh, thank you very much for invitation, a very inciting uh, discussion. I think that uh, uh, Russian-Turkish relations are very complicated. Uh, and, uh, we uh, personally, I, I can't say that uh, Russia um, uh, concerns Turkey as a as a pillar. Russia concerns Turkey as a very important actor, uh, uh, both in the Middle East and uh, in the Black Sea region. I fully agree with uh, my colleague and friend Mikhail uh, Chelikpala that uh, the Black Sea region. Uh, maybe um, is much more complicated from the security point of view uh, in Russian-Turkish relations, uh, because um, uh, this Black Sea region um, has interconnection uh, with uh, both Turkey and Russia. And because of that, um, we can't speak about the situation in the Black Sea region and the situation um, in the Middle East, uh, for example, the cooperation um, within uh, Syria, uh, Syrian conflict, uh, maybe some Mediterranean issues in, in the same way as we uh, have to do it uh, with regard to the Black Sea region. I think that uh, the first part of your question is also very important. Uh, um, how Turkey um, uh, views itself uh, in the region and uh, what is its uh, foreign policy uh, identity uh, because because it's uh, it's a very uh, exciting exciting topic both maybe uh, in uh, Turkey and in Russia because it's very um, exciting thing to understand uh, what is behind uh, Turkey's foreign policy in the region uh, we um, have, do, do you hear me? Sure. Yeah, yes, we do. Uh, well, uh, we, uh, we uh, can see that for the most part of its Republican uh, history, Turkey has now positioned itself as a Middle Eastern country. Uh, and uh, the ruling elite for decades uh, followed uh, this lane of um, uh, Turkish perception in the world and in the region. Uh, but uh, in the 2000s, we uh, could see another story, uh, another um, uh, try to identificate um, Turkey and Turkish foreign policy, uh, to, to um, say about, to, to speak about Turkey as a country of multiple regional identities. Uh, which means that uh, neither uh, of European identity nor of uh, Middle Eastern identity. So uh, this uh, revolution uh, in uh, foreign policy identities in Turkey uh, indicates new aims, uh, new goals for its uh, foreign policy. And it also uh, reflected 
uh, in uh, the new dynamics in Russian-Turkish relations. We can uh, speak about the first period in Russian-Turkish relations in the 21st century, uh, which um, continued for the first decade for 2000s, and we can speak about this Turkish, uh, Russian Turkish foreign uh, relations after, for example, uh, the attempted coup. Uh, the new dimensions uh, in this uh, relations are focus on regional security, uh, which is the main uh, topic in Russian Turkish uh, cooperation, Russian Turkish. Uh, negotiations for the last five or six years. Uh, that is why not trade, uh, not uh, tourist issues, but this regional security. And I think it's uh, very important and very indicative uh, for the current situation in uh, Russian-Turkish relations. And uh, uh, the Black Sea region uh, is uh, a showcase of this transformation in um, and the dialogue and uh, the model of uh, bilateral relations between Ankara and Moscow. Um, thank you so much. And I would like to ask, like, uh, so uh, both both of you, uh, Mr. Chalikpala and Shlikov, you were talking about the, the Black Sea region as uh, being more complicated than all the other domains in which Russia and Turkey can cooperate. And, uh, why is it more difficult to cooperate in the Black Sea region than, for example, in Syria or South Caucasus? As, for example, usually uh, Russian and Turkish presidents, uh, usually they meet when they have something to discuss uh, about Syria. Yeah. Uh, so recently they've met uh, many times to discuss the, uh, the, the possibility of normalization tie, of the normalizing ties between Turkey and Syria. And usually this seems to be the most important domain where uh, all the decisions are made on the, uh, on the highest level. So what is so specific about the Black Sea that, uh, that makes it more complicated than the Syrian domain, for example? So, Mr. Celik Palak. Yeah, yeah. This is a, a center of gravitation now. This is the reason most probably why, you know, uh, up until that time, the Black Sea related issues are mainly literacy issues. And Turkey and Russia have a kind of a similar perspective. And they are not the same interest and the same policies uh, all over. But, you know, uh, on the many issues, they, they can get together and agree. And the idea is to keep the Black Sea region as a region of uh, actors, literals, and Turkish uh, wording is uh, regional ownership for a long while. And within this umbrella term, and Turkey managed to balance uh, Russia and work together with Russia and try to keep the outsiders, non-literals, out of the equation, including the US and other great powers of out of area. And uh, within this in uh, security perspective, uh, the Black Sea cooperation mechanisms worked and parties establish some basis for trade and, and integration. And Montreux Convention help both actors to, 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 to control the security environment within the Black Sea region. But, you know, since 2008, we have an increasing pressure by uh, Turkey's Western allies. And those Western allies now pressurizing and sanctioning Moscow as well. And it seems that in the near future, especially uh, one way or another, and we if we get a kind of a resolution or a peaceful environment in the Black Sea region, uh, the the international community would like to uh, try to push uh, Turkey and Russia and try to utilize other literals to be in the region for a security provider, and this may affect the balance within the Black Sea region, and it is a kind of a threat uh, for for other regional actors, as well as Turkey and Russia. We don't know yet. And if it is the possibility, then we need to find some new uh, Black Sea security regime to balance the other actors. And if the others, especially Littler, started starts to question uh, Montreux and other, uh, and other uh, regime in navigation and passage, I mean, uh, then it's also going to be an issue. And 
if it is going to be the case, most probably Turkish-Russian bilateral relations could not be enough to, to respond to those expectations and they internationalize the Black Sea related issues. And this is the limitation. For the other regions and Turkey and Russia, most of the time have no uh, the, 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 sa the same interest in resolving many issues, but they can easily manage to get together and to find some resolutions. And as you mentioned, leaders to leaders uh, negotiations and, and uh, getting together help both countries to, to move forward up until that time, even under the uh, dire straits and uh, problematic uh, areas and, and, and times, I may say. Therefore, I see the internationalization of the, the Black Sea related issues, security related issues, and those are the threats and, and it may affect both Turkey and Russia. Uh, okay, so what makes the Black Sea region so specific is that it is multilateral it cannot be its problems cannot be solved on bilateral level level right yeah it's not enough and turkey and russia uh, cannot resolve with the black sea related security related issues in a with the bilateral issues uh, relations they have power and they have potential to offer uh, some concrete uh, precautions to the, all those literals and but i see the other literals perspective or the threat perception from russia is high and therefore, it's not easy for Turkey to attract those actors to work together with Russia under those current circumstances. This is the point that I would like to raise. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And so, Mr. Shlikov, would you agree I, I, here? I'd like, I like to add one thing. Um, I also agree with uh, Metat uh, that uh, the security issues are the most uh, important uh, priorities for both countries in the region. But also, we do have to admit that uh, the Black Sea region uh, is witnessing a uh, rising militarization. That's true. Since, since uh, the 2014, um, and this uh, process is going on. Um, uh, uh, Turkey uh, also um, uh, is going to construct and to establish new military bases uh, on the Black Sea coast, for example, this uh, uh, Trabzon, uh, military base in Trabzon. Uh, and also Turkey is active in different uh, military exercises uh, in the Black Sea in cooperation with NATO, for example, this uh, uh, sea breeze uh, military exercises. Um, uh, Turkey um, uh, is in uh, very close connections uh, with other literal states in case of uh, security questions, security issues. And uh, as uh, Mitat said, um, uh, uh, all this uh, influenced um, threat perception uh, in, in, in Moscow uh, because uh, this balance of power uh, has changed uh, since uh, uh, 2014 and is changing. And both Russia and Turkey uh, are engaged, uh, engaged in this uh, changing uh, balance of power in the region. And this is very important to my mind. And also this affects both Russia and Turkey and perception uh, of uh, uh, Moscow's uh, steps in the region in Ankara and vice versa. Uh -huh. that, that is an interesting point. So th thank you. Thank you, Pavel. And uh, I think uh, now we can also switch uh, to the south and analyze Russian Turkish cooperation in the Middle East, which has, uh, which since 2015 has become one of the most active areas of Russian-Turkish mm -hmm. cooperation, negotiations, uh, sometimes partnerships, sometimes rivalry, or even competition. Um, recently, there has been a lot of talk about uh, changing Turkish foreign policy. Uh, some of the analysts have said that the epoch of the Arab Spring has ended. Uh, the epoch of the Arab Spring that probably characterized by the rivalry between uh, Arab Gulf monarchies with Saudi Arabia and the UAE 
uh, being the leaders and um, uh, Turkey and Qatar on another side. So recently, uh, Turkey has reestablished relations with the UAE, with uh, Saudi Arabia. Now there, have, there has been an exchange of visits between the leaders of the uh, Saudi, between the leaders of Saudi Arabia and Turkey. So uh, how does this, uh, why does this change happen? Uh, are these purely economic reasons or probably some political reasons? And in this regard, can we say that the epoch of the Arab Spring is over? So I would like to ask Mr. Shlikov to answer this question first. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, very interesting question, and uh, I, I would say that uh, each part of your uh, question uh, deserves uh, a full-scale lecture, uh, actually. Uh, but I, I, I try to, to answer uh, uh, point by point, step by step. I think that uh, the um, transformation of Soviet foreign policy um, has started uh, not in uh, 2020 or 2022, uh, it starts. Um, it started uh, in uh, the mid twenty uh, tens, and even even uh, in in the late two thousands, uh, because um, this transformation of uh, Turkish foreign policy, or as uh, some my Turkish colleagues uh, usually say, uh, the foreign policy of New Turkey as uh, Erdogan uh, once coined this uh, notion. Uh, and this transformation, um, uh, to my mind, has uh, uh, four, four main factors. Uh, it was affected by the global economic crisis uh, in the um, late 2000s. It was also affected by the Arab Spring uh, it was affected by the um, uh, domestic uprising of uh, 2013 or uh, Gezi protests, uh, as, 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 as we know uh, these events. And uh, the final point is the failed coup d'etat attempt uh, undertaken in uh, 2016. So uh, this uh, new um, role of the United States in the region, uh, partly withdrawal from the Middle East. Uh, this uh, pivot to Asia um, um, proclaimed um, uh, strategy, pivot to Asia strategy proclaimed by the United States. All this affected also Turkey, because we uh, we can see uh, new initiatives, uh, um, let alone uh, this. Um, uh, Merkez uh, Ülke um, uh, term coined by Ahmed Davutoglu, this uh, central uh, Turkey as a central state for a greater, for a larger Middle East region, for Central Asia, for our, um, North Africa, for the Middle East uh, in general. Uh, but um, I, I'd like to remember another initiative um, uh, coined by uh, the current uh, foreign minister. Um, uh, this uh, Asia Again uh, initiative, Yeniden uh, Asia, or the late um, uh, 2019. Uh, all this uh, means that Turkey is in search of new uh, priorities uh, for its foreign policy, and new modes uh, of uh, its relations uh, with uh, Western partners. Uh, with uh, Asia in general, with China in particular, uh, and of course uh, uh, with uh, with Russia, um, I, I don't I don't um, understand the this notion uh, uh, you you said the epoch or the Arab Spring. I think uh, this epoch um, uh, ended uh, maybe in twenty thirteen. Um, after the coup in Egypt, after the um, uh, Mohamed Morsi um, uh, lost uh, its presidency. Uh, uh, be because uh, the Arab Spring, uh, as, as a dream, as a dream for um, new, uh, new, new period, more democratic, more liberal, more 
um, more open, more modern, I would say, uh, for the whole region. Uh, this dream um, ended um, uh, in 2013, because since that, it was quite clear uh, that uh, there's nothing good uh, will be with the Arab Spring. Uh, only negative effects, uh, which we also see even today. Uh, the civil war in Syria, uh, the turmoil in Libya, uh, all this um, uh, is going on. But there's nothing uh, with the dream or the uh, Arab Spring, which ended maybe two years after the first surprise. Uh, uh, with regard to uh, this um, uh, late, um, recent, I would say, recent steps uh, of uh, Turkey, I think that uh, uh, um, uh, you are right that. Uh, they are uh, economic drive, uh, financial drive, because uh, uh, Turkey's main concern is overcoming the financial and economic crisis uh, in the grip of uh, which uh, the country um, has found itself. And uh, it is a main topic um, for both its uh, foreign policy and domestic policy agenda of uh, Erdogan uh, himself, uh, his government, his party. Because uh, on the eve uh, of the uh, forthcoming election, uh, which is scheduled for the summer, for the June uh, 2023, uh, all uh, questions uh, are interconnected with the future, the political future of Erdogan, uh, his party, his government, and his uh, project uh, of uh, a new Turkey. And because of that, uh, um, I, 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 I don't um, uh, agree with you uh, uh, in, in terms, I, I would say not reestablishing, uh, but uh, mending relations, mending relations uh, with those countries. Uh, because uh, the problems uh, which were in the core um, of this deterioration uh, movement uh, for the last um, uh, decade and a half, or maybe two decades, uh, uh, when we speak about, or maybe uh, more than two decades, uh, uh, if we speak about uh, the Israel, because uh, the Marmara uh, incident uh, was more than two decades uh, earlier. We uh, and uh, it starts it started from from this time from Marmara um, uh, crisis. Mavi Marmara crisis. Uh, so uh, uh, many, many steps uh, in mending relations with um, Gulf monarchies, with Israel, and after that uh, with Egypt uh, are economic uh, driving. Uh, because uh, from UAE, uh, from Saudi Arabia, uh, Turkey um, uh, bought uh, some uh, swap deals, uh, which helped to uh, man fans, economic fans, uh, uh, and um, uh, which helped to um, uh, support uh, uh, lira, support uh, this um, uh, the free fall of lira, which we witnessed uh, for for uh, maybe uh, four years since uh, twenty eighteen. These uh, currency swap deals um, uh, somehow was in the core of this process of mending relations you know, with um, uh, Gulf countries and uh, finally with Egypt. But uh, there are also uh, some uh, important uh, points. Uh, first, uh, on the uh, diplomatic level, uh, Turkey, uh, to my mind, is uh, searching how to overcome uh, political and diplomatic isolation uh, in the Middle East region, uh, uh, which is uh, a very costly uh, for the country, uh, uh, given uh, the deep economic and financial crisis uh, Turkey faced uh, for the uh, last five uh, years. And so uh, this political price uh, of this uh, diplomatic and uh, political isolation in the region has forced 
uh, Turkey to improve uh, its relation, to man ties uh, with Israel, with Saudi Arabia, uh, with United Arab Emirates, and finally, even with Egypt, this uh, original ri rivalry, uh, historically original rivalry of uh, Turkey. Another important point to my mind uh, is uh, uh, adaptation to new regional order. Uh, uh, I, I think this uh, Abraham uh, Accords um, uh, also uh, greatly affected um, uh, the region itself, uh, regional uh, superpowers like uh, Turkey, Israel, um, uh, Egypt. And uh, this factor also uh, uh, pushed Turkey uh, uh, for new steps uh, for some uh, reconsideration of its foreign policy uh, in the region. Uh, uh, so uh, another, another um, uh, important point, um, I think, uh, um, regarding with um, this uh, Eastern Mediterranean issue, uh, in the uh, late uh, 2010s, we witnessed um, uh, consolidation of different countries, so so-called uh, three lateral um, partnerships. Uh, Cyprus, uh, uh, Greece, Egypt, uh, Cyprus, Greece, uh, Israel, uh, and uh, uh, Eastern Mediterranean Gas Forum. Uh, from, from which uh, Turkey uh, was uh, literally excluded. Uh, and uh, uh, Turkey um, uh, saw all these uh, events as, uh, as obvious threat uh, for its energy security, uh, for its uh, geopolitical potential uh, in the region. And uh, also understand this new situation, uh, the construction of those um, alliances or partnerships um, as an imperative to take uh, counter steps. And uh, uh, I think that uh, the steps of mending relations uh, with uh, Gulf countries, with Israel, uh, many fans and uh, relations with Egypt, um, uh, all this um, reflects the aim of Turkey to deconstruct uh, this regional network of cooperation, uh, which uh, was seen as a threat for Turkey's geopolitical potential and uh, future energy uh, ambitions of Ankara in the region. Uh, thank you. This was a very detailed analysis of Turkish foreign policy. Uh, as for the Arab Spring here, I meant it like in broader sense that the Arab Spring sparked rivalry and give opportunity for Gulf countries and Turkey to try to influence internal processes in uh, North Africa, Syria and, and other countries. So uh, now I'd like to ask Mr. Uh, Çelikpala, so how do you view these, the reasons for these changes in Turkish foreign policy? Is this uh, an attempt to deconstruct the alliance in Eastern Mediterranean, as Mr. Shlikov mentioned, or there are some other reasons? Okay, let me try to expand the discussion by following uh, Pavel's uh, comments and uh, points, in fact. You know, uh, this Arab Springs or colored revolutions uh, from the North Africa to the Middle East uh, happened in another era, in fact. In those days, uh, Turkey's perspective of regional and global policy and policy making or balances are much more different than the current environment. There is a sea change within this uh, 10 to 15 years in Turkey's environment as well as Turkey's foreign policy making. There are some domestic and regional and as well as international reasons of this sea change. First of all, when the those developments has just started, uh, Turkey saw itself or Turkey's decision makers, including the president himself, saw Turkey as a kind of a uh, power behind the change uh, in all those environment. 
uh, on a democratic way or creating a kind of new security and then opportunities in all those regions and Turkey may play a kind of a catalyst and a uh, force majeure in, in, in all those changes. And Erdogan believed that he may easily get a support, a public support from all those regional actors as well as a domestic environment. But you know, at a point, uh, we lost the, 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 the effects of change domestically and regionally. Uh, uh, Pavel mentioned this Gezi movement and democratization uh, schemes or, or currents within Turkey uh, change the environment. What's happening in Syria uh, faced Turkey with Russia and the other actors. We had a plane incident as well. And we failed to, Turkey, I mean, Ankara failed to uh, tell its position and interest to its own uh, allies and partners as well, including Russia. And the end result is catastrophic, in fact. Now we have a kind of a military and non-military, hard and soft threats and challenges in all those regions in, in, in front of Turkey. And Turkey, instead of uh, being a kind of a uh, factor or an actor to, to shape the regional security environment, started to uh, attract or understand or get some threat perception from all those regional actors. And those challenges from terrorism to separatism, Cyprus issue, Eastern Mediterranean developments, they have some geopolitical aspect as well. Egyptian issues and Turkish, um, uh, of course, Greece relations, uh, energy, illegal immigrants, environmental degradation, the, the worsening relations with Russia and losing American and European connections are all the factors that affected Ankara's mindset. And, you know, for a while, we see a kind of an autonomous actor trying to defend its own interest. And, and you remember most probably this precious loneliness uh, narrative for a short while uh, prevailing over in Ankara. But, you know, it didn't respond to Turkey's expectations and interests. And then we have a kind of a coup d'etat. Uh, and then after this coup d'etat, we see uh, a new, uh, if it is the, the word epoch or a new uh, era for Turkish foreign policy making. And we see that the Ankara or, or decision makers in Ankara started to raise the issue that we need to increase the number of our friends and decrease the number of enemies and to create a new political environment. Uh, the starting point was Turkish-Russian relations. It worked, in fact, because of the leaders' uh, perspectives and expectations and both countries' interests and, and expectations as well. Despite the fact that Ankara and Moscow have not the same uh, expectations at the end in Syria, in some other issues, they managed to develop a new environment. But, you know, uh, beforehand, uh, we lost, Ankara lost, uh, Israel, Egypt, uh, Greece, and partly Cyprus and Syria, uh, and of course, Armenia. And this created a kind of a negative environment for Turkey. But now it's impossible to survive under those circumstances. Turkey is in need of normalize its position and relations vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, the neighboring countries, and as well as the great powers of the region and you know, under the changing uh, Euro-Atlantic security environment, it is not survival. survivable. It, we have to change. This is the necessity. And now, what are we facing with? Turkey is pushing its environment to, for a change. But, you know, regional environment not an, is an easy environment to, to, to change and to make the Turkey's uh, approach or to restore or fix Turkey's, uh, I don't know, reputation in all those regions. Now, try to link Libya to Egypt and try to establish better relations with all Israel, uh, trying uh, via appointing ambassador whatsoever. But, you know, it, it's going to take time. And the, the regional environment is not suitable to, to for a quick change. And then we see, for example, Emirates uh, or Qatar or Saudis time to time. Uh, and, you know, contradictory narratives within a decade. 
And it's not easy to tell this story, not only for our neighboring countries and partners, as well as in domestic issues as well. And domestic environment is also questioning uh, this attitude. Uh, as Pavel mentioned, we will have elections next year. And these elections will be very uh, important for domestic and regional environment as well. We will see the end result. And at the end, I don't know whether it's a uh, possibility to change the environment and what will be the capacity and capability of Turkey in all those environment uh, because you know we have a kind of an, uh, a, a threatening environment and Turkey is isolated and excluded and alienated that's true and is it possible for Ankara to recover or restore and fix it uh, it necessitates some serious effort but that's true Turkey now has a kind of a much more broader perspective Europe, Eurasia, uh, of course, other regions, uh, but still uh, the basics are the same. What we need a kind of to a necessity to employ a comprehensive uh, approach to encounter today's security threats uh, in a cooperative uh, manner. Uh, we will see, we will see in, in the near future, most probably. Uh, thank you so much for expanding Pavel's uh, ideas and points. And just to, uh, I, I would like to ask the, the, the final question, because we had uh, made uh, the broad overview of Turkish foreign policy in the Middle East, and not only in the Middle East, but in the East Mediterranean as well. So uh, now I would suggest focusing on a particular issue of Turkish-Syrian relations, because recently Turkey started sending very... Um, I, I would, I would say, uh, very explicit signals that it's ready to mend ties with Syria. It's ready to probably rebuild ties with Syria after uh, Turkey was supporting uh, opposition in uh, Syria for the previous ten years, and uh, probably on in this regard, uh, Turkey counts on Russia. And actually, it was probably Russia that pushed Turkey to start rebuilding ties with Syria instead of conducting a new military operation in the north uh, of Syria. So are there any chances that Russia can uh, help uh, and help rebuild the ties between the two countries? And uh, what issues must be tackled for the relations to be reestablished? Uh, I would like to ask Pavel Shlikov at first. Well, I think that um, uh, cooperation uh, between uh, Moscow and Ankara in the Syrian crisis uh, was important for uh, the both sides and uh, are important uh, currently and will be important in the near uh, future. Uh, with regard to the, even for, for uh, military operations of both countries in Syria, uh, the, the connection between two countries uh, was very important because without connection, uh, uh, there was um, uh, a uh, tragedy, a tragedy in November uh, 2015, uh, and um, I, I mean this um, uh, jet crisis, uh, jet crisis which uh, uh, demonstrated quite obviously that uh, both countries are, are destined to cooperate in Syria. Uh, uh, Moscow, um, with regard to the military cooperation with uh, Turkey, considered uh, this uh, cooperation as, as, as a promising step, as an important step, uh, because uh, first, uh, this um, uh, cooperation uh, 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 well, uh, helped uh, Russia to understand uh, the uh, situation on the ground. Uh, 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 cut out some obvious military threats uh, for uh, uh, Russian forces in Syria. Um, uh, cooperation with uh, Ankara also helped to uh, launch uh, the Astana process, uh, the social negotiation for, uh, format, uh, which uh, was uh, fruitful uh, in, in, in some very important uh, um, uh, cases and some very important questions. 
Uh, also, this uh, cooperation within uh, uh, mil uh, within uh, the search for some sort of military or paramilitary solution uh, uh, important uh, for um, uh, for Moscow because uh, reapproachment uh, with uh, Ankara uh, drove an additional wedge into Turkey relations uh, with its uh, western parts uh, with regard to, uh, to Syria and this mistrust. Uh, between uh, the uh, United States and Turkey with regard to um, uh, America's or Washington's um, uh, policy towards uh, Kurdish question. Very uh, sensitive issue uh, for uh, Turkish both domestic agenda and uh, uh, its, uh, its uh, uh, foreign policy. With regard to uh, these recent events, um, uh, um, I, 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 I think uh, I, I can agree with uh, uh, your statement about uh, this uh, uh, Russia uh, behind uh, to, uh, Turkey's steps uh, towards, uh, towards Syria. Uh, uh, I, I think that uh, uh, it uh, looked like uh, uh, one uh, and a half step forward. Uh, and at the same time, one step back. Uh, we, uh, when, when we um, watched uh, the official statements uh, of Erdogan, um, Mevlut Çavuşoglu, some uh, party officials, I mean, the ruling uh, Justice and Development Party officials, uh, we witnessed this one and a half step forward and one step back. Uh, we, uh, you, you, you uh, misunderstood me as Chavosh um, uh, answered um, uh, another question of our uh, uh, journalist who tried to uh, clarify uh, uh, the new position of Ankara uh, towards uh, dialogue with Bashar al-Assad uh, to reconciliation uh, with uh, Syria. Maybe in the future, uh, as uh, some uh, officials of the ruling party uh, stressed and uh, just uh, estimated uh, this uh, perspective of reconciliation. I think um, uh, within the question of uh, you know, the mending uh, ties uh, with uh, Damascus, uh, there are, are some important uh, points uh, for both um, uh, domestic agenda and uh, foreign policy agenda of uh, Ankara uh, just now. Uh, first, uh, Kurdish question. There are, there are several dimensions, I would say, of this process of um, a possible reconciliation or just uh, mending ties, mending relations with um, uh, Syria. First, uh, uh, Kurdish Pavel, question. Pavel, can I ask you just to be a little bit brief so that we can uh, and the discussion in one hour. So, uh, first to undo the uh, de facto Turkish led self rule uh, in northern Syria. This first uh, dimension. Uh, uh, second dimension and second uh, important point uh, this uh, demographic threat uh, which posed uh, by uh, Syrian refugees, uh, 4 million uh, in number. A very uh, pushing uh, question uh, domestically as well, uh, because in Turkey now we uh, can see cities uh, where uh, you mm, listen to Arabic and not to Turkish, mostly. Um, another important thing: this um, uh, safe zone, uh, because negotiations uh, maybe uh, maybe result in. Uh, another step towards this uh, uh, highly, highly wanted, uh, highly, highly uh, searched, um, highly desired um, uh, 32 kilometer safe zone for Turkey and uh, uh, opportunity for Turkish military forces uh, to follow uh, this uh, Kurdish opposition military uh, comrades on the Syrian uh, territory. And with regard to Russia, I, I, I uh, 
we have to admit that there are a lot of speculations with regard to uh, Russia's rule uh, in this uh, recent steps of Ankara towards uh, Syria. One of uh, important part of these uh, speculations is uh, a financial support uh, of uh, Russia uh, since uh, July uh, uh, 2022. And um, uh, this speculation stressed uh, that uh, this uh, uh, financial support, uh, which also um, means uh, the necessity for Ankara to demonstrate, at least to demonstrate uh, some new approaches to this regional uh, question uh, within the EU uh, uh, regional situation, which affected also by the Black Sea region, the Ukrainian crisis, uh, etc. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pavel. And now, Mr. Cherek Pala, uh, so what is your view on the recent developments? Mm. Uh, try to be brief. Uh, you know, the Syria issue is a tense issue. And it, it affects uh, Turkey's many policies uh, very severely. And, and you know, you do remember, uh, this is the reason why Turkish-Russian relations were worsened. And of course, how to recover it, the Syrian effect. And Syrian effect on Turkish-Russian relations is very important, which means Russia has a potential uh, to, to affect Turkey's policies within Syria and to resolve Turkish Syrian disagreements very easily. And on the other hand, there is a danger that it, it may poise Turkish, poison Turkish-Russian relations as well. Therefore, it's a tense issue. Uh, the parties are in need to need to, to be careful on dealing with this issue. Uh, you know, with uh, Astana processes, Turkey and Russia opened a new channel and space for Turkey, especially. Turkey's main expectations are to fight against terror and to PKK and affiliates to limit their activities on Turkey's border and to normalize then afterwards Syria as a uh, unified state with its own borders. And then Assad Erdogan relations or Ankara Damascus relations are secondary from this perspective. If Damascus is, is responded Turkey with a positive answer in this fight against terror, with PKK and the others, then most probably we may easily find a, a productive space. And Russian influence over Damascus may help to normalize those relations. And we know that some overt and covert uh, negotiations and meetings are prevailing in this uh, issue. And Russia uh, plays a kind of a facilitator role. And this is very important. I see a positive and a window of opportunity for both parties to normalize its relations. Uh, and then, of course, secondly, it comes, as Pavel mentioned, refugee issues. How to uh, send those refugees, at least 90, 80, 90% of them, back to their uh, home homelands or home territories without facing with any, any kind of a threat and to not to face with any uh, refugee movement in, in the, on the borders of Turkey, those are the issues which makes the Syrian issue again complicated. And then most probably Turkey and Russia has not enough potential to resolve issue finally. And international committees participation is a necessity and that makes everything again complicated. Uh, therefore, it's a tense issue, but I see a kind of an agreement comparing with the other regional issues between Turkey and Russia to resolve and normalize Turkey's relations with Syria and it's a possibility, and hopefully we may face such a kind of a development in the future. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was a very fruitful discussion, and I would like to thank my dear colleagues, Mr. Chalikpala and Mr. Shlikov, for uh, bringing forward their points and arguments about the uh, Russian-Turkish relations, Turkish-Syrian relations, and uh, giving a very broad, but at the same time, very detailed overview of Turkish foreign policy. I think uh, this was a very good uh, exchange of opinions between Russia and Turkey and on the academic level. And uh, hopefully 
we will continue conducting these discussions in the near future. Thank you. Thank you so much.